Hey guys, welcome to the Smoke and Tire headquarters here in Culver City, California. Today we're gonna to do something a little bit different than the typical one takes I've been showing you. The kind folks at the EXR Racing Series, which is a new spec racing series, have invited me to Laguna Seca to do a few hot laps with data analysis in their EXR LV02 race car. Uh, I've gotten to drive this race car before at their smaller uh, Los Angeles track, and it's a lot of fun. It's a 1600 pound race car, tube chassis, not based on a production car, with a 240 horsepower Renault Sport four cylinder and uh, a live rear axle, a Sedev six speed sequential racing gearbox. The car only weighs about 1800 pounds wet and it's pretty fun to drive with its front engine rear drive layout and the fact that it's on Yokohama DOT road tires, not a full slick, providing a more forgiving driving experience. Now, I've never gotten to drive Laguna Seca before, and this is sort of a dream experience for me. Race car on one of the most amazing tracks in the world, of course. So what I did was I went out and did a session. We took my best lap, and then I sat down with one of their pros, Alex Prema, professional racing driver, to analyze the data and see how I could improve on the next session. So let's start by taking a look at my best lap of 10 laps from session one. So that wasn't too bad. After my first session, my best lap was a 1 minute and 45.267, which is pretty solid for me in a car I'm not too familiar with on a track I've never driven before. Let's look at the data sheet where we compare my lap time to Alex's blistering 1 minute and 40 second time, 5 seconds faster, and see where I can make up some time in the next session. The most important section is up at the top and it compares speed versus distance around the racetrack. The blue line is my lap, the red line is Alex's lap. So you can see as we go through the data where he's faster than me and <laughs> there's a lot of it. So the biggest difference immediately is the braking zone at the end of the front straight where Alex is able to get on the brakes 25 meters later than me and carry speed much deeper into the corner. He also treats it as a single apex at the end of the corner as opposed to the double apex that I'm doing there. Through turn two I'm looking pretty good as well as turn three but in turn four Alex manages to use significantly less brake than I do and carry more speed onto the short center straight before the five uphill. I also brake more than Alex at turn five and I brake a lot more than Alex at turn six, the kink going up the hill. Entering into the corkscrew, our speeds are actually quite similar, but he gets on the power harder as we go down the back of the corkscrew, whereas I use lighter maintenance throttle. 
Alex breaks significantly less than I do through the downhill turn 9, as well as breaking earlier into the right hand turn 10, allowing him to accelerate earlier and carry more speed. Turn 11 is the last corner at Laguna, and I actually took that one pretty well. Now that we know where I can improve, mainly at the end of the front straight, as well as the braking zones in turns 4, 5, 6, and 9, I'm going to get back in the car and try it again, trying to implement what I've learned. second session I felt a little more comfortable in the car and I was able to what I thought was break a little later in certain key spots to improve my lap time, resulting in a lap that was 8 tenths of a second faster than before. I ran a 144.41, which I was pretty happy with, even though I was still 4 seconds off of Alex's best time. Unlike the emotional aspects of driving a car, the data doesn't lie. You could think you're braking somewhere, but the data might say something completely different. So, as we look at my first lap compared to my second lap, my second lap is in red and my first lap is in blue. As we go through turns 1 and 2, my speeds were almost exactly the same. I was able to brake a little later into 3, gaining me a bit of distance, as well as use less brakes going into four like Alex recommended for better exit speed on the center short straight. I got a little quicker through turn five in the uphill and I didn't make much difference at all in turn six. I just didn't have the confidence going through the kink up the hill. I managed to be more aggressive out of the corkscrew and carry more speed out of turn eight into the downhill on nine and was successful in using less brakes in nine to carry a little more speed and get a better exit down the hill. I couldn't quite get the confidence to use less brakes in turn 10 after just the one session and I managed to brake earlier and get on the gas earlier through 11 giving me a better exit speed onto the front straight. Now, Alex is a professional driver. He's raced in Formula One, GP2, V8 Supercar, DTM, Le Mans, and all manner of other sub Formula series. He's been doing this for 20 years, so obviously he's going to be incredible at it. And I am just a decent amateur. Let's have a look at how Alex does it and watch the master work as he lays down a 140.46 around Laguna. <laughs>
biggest difference between how I drive and how a pro drives is confidence in the brakes and the handling. Alex brakes so much later than I do that I honestly didn't think it was possible to do that. But showing me the data shows me that yes, it is possible the car will hold. At this point, it's just a matter of building the confidence to go out and really push the car. You can also see during Alex's lap that he uses a lot more of the curbing than I do. This honestly comes from the fact that he is a racing driver hired to race that car, whereas I am someone who has begged for a few minutes of seat time. Therefore, he is willing to get much closer to the edge of the track, and my main goal is don't crash the damn car. So, I'd imagine there's at least a second and a half or two seconds worth of just curbing usage because it allows him to carry much more speed through every corner by using those curbs that I wasn't really willing to use. Lastly, there are a couple spots in the track, such as turn six, where Alex doesn't really break at all, and I do. And that right there is sheer balls and talent, which I, had, I don't have yet, but I'm working on it. So I really want to thank the guys at EXR for showing me not only what I could do in the car, but how I can improve and what the car is capable of in the hands of a true pro. I'd like to thank EXR for having me out at Laguna Seca. It was a magnificent experience, and I hope going forward that you guys can get to use something like this AIM system technology to analyze your lap times and find out from a hard data perspective where you can improve and where the car's got more than you've got for now. Thanks, and I'll see you later.